The people in charge of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant have another problem on their hands. They say they found water pouring into a drain inside a reactor building. Officials at Tokyo Electric Power Company say they don't know where the water is coming from and they're not sure how much radioactive material it contains. Workers spotted the leak on the first floor of the Reactor 3 building in video footage from a remote-controlled robot. They say it's about 30 centimeters wide and constant. TEPCO officials say the water is probably flowing toward the basement. A large amount of radioactive water has accumulated there. The officials say rainwater may have gotten into the building. Radiation levels are too high for workers to approach the site, so officials are trying to find the source of the leak by analyzing the video footage. I'm Marty Gunderson from Fairwinds. In order to build more nuclear power plants as the nuclear industry would like, or start up the vulnerable plants in Japan that Prime Minister Abe is pushing to do, or to continue to operate the hazardous Mark I reactors that the Nuclear Regulatory Commission continues to allow to be run without their Fukushima modifications, nuclear power corporations and proponents worldwide need you to accept these four myths. The first myth is that nuclear power is safe and that there is no risk. Nuclear proponents claim it is clean, safe, and green and that it's the world's answer to climate change. They also claim that the chance of a nuclear meltdown is one in a million per reactor year. Do the math. There's 400 nuclear plants. So that calculates out to no meltdowns in 2,500 years. If those 400 plants had begun operation when the Parthenon was built, there still would never have been a nuclear accident. Well, history's proven that figure to be wrong. There have been five meltdowns in the last 35 years. In other words, one meltdown every seven years. If all of the coal plants in the oil plants worldwide were replaced by nuclear power plants, the math shows we could expect one meltdown every year. Is that a risk you're willing to take? The second myth is that no one has died as a result of nuclear accidents. The truth is that as many as a million people have already died from radiation releases due to nuclear power plant accidents without counting any of the radiation-induced cancer deaths expected from Fukushima. In his landmark cancer study following the Three Mile Island accident, epidemiologist Dr. Steve Wing definitively showed that there were significant cancers. You can check out Dr. Wing's full presentation at the Pennsylvania State House on the 30th anniversary of the Three Mile Island accident. It's on the Fairwinds website. As many as a million people have died at Chernobyl, according to Dr. Alexei Yablikov in his landmark book, Chernobyl, Consequences of a Catastrophe for People and the Environment. Worse yet, in an effort to hide the truth, key Soviet scientists were thrown in jail when they published Chernobyl mortality data indicating cesium-caused heart deformities in young children. Jailing scientists and destroying data that proved illnesses and death doesn't mean that nuclear power radiation-induced deaths did not occur. Maggie and I discussed this brave scientist and other whistleblowers around the world in our recent presentation at Clarkson University, which is also featured on the Fairwinds website. The third myth that nuclear proponents want you to believe is that nuclear power is the only feasible alternative to global warming. Again, it's not true. Nuclear power is not new, and it's not modern, 
but instead is a technology developed more than 60 years ago and is dependent on large electric distribution centers. We've entered the second decade of a new century since those nuclear reactors were built. And thanks to advancement in computer technology, it's now possible to successfully supply electricity from small renewable sources to almost anywhere. Technological advancements that have created cell phones that have replaced landlines, laptops with more computing power than old mainframe computers are now capable of replacing giant obsolete power stations with small locally controlled and locally owned sources of power. I had a long discussion about new power options with one of my personal heroes, Amory Lovins, founder of the Rocky Mountain Institute. That video is also available on the Fairwinds website. Nuclear, gas, oil, and coal proponents claim that the sun doesn't shine at night and therefore a renewable electric grid is impossible. These same people and corporations are wedded to an old power industry paradigm that asserts that it's possible to safely store the most hazardous radioactive substance known to man for a quarter of a million years. Well, I contend that if scientists can safely store toxic nuclear material for thousands and thousands of years, then scientists are certainly capable of designing electric storage that will last overnight. In fact, solar storage technology is already available. The fourth and the final myth that nuclear corporations want you to believe is that nuclear power is cheap. In fact, the cost of a world full of nuclear power plants is prohibitive and would actually leave less money to fund real carbon reduction. New nuclear plants in Georgia and South Carolina and in the United Kingdom will charge twice as much for the nuclear electricity as other energy sources. Former NRC Commissioner Peter Bradford, who served on the Nuclear Regulatory Commission during the TMI accident, said, Trying to solve global warming by building nuclear power plants is like trying to solve global hunger by serving everyone caviar. I'm a nuclear engineer. I was a reactor physics instructor and directed nuclear power plant decommissioning, nuclear fuel rack design and construction. I bought into this technology and these nuclear power myths until I saw every safety system fail and witness a triple meltdown at Fukushima Daiichi. Nuclear power is not safe. It does kill people. It can be replaced with renewables, and it's too expensive to make a meaningful contribution to our world. I'm Arnie Gunderson. I'll keep you informed. Next, radiation, tainted soil, buildings left exposed to the elements. Areas within the evacuation zone of Japan's Fukushima Prefecture face countless challenges in trying to reestablish themselves. People who lived in places where the contamination is relatively low are hoping to return within a few years. But they now face another impediment. While they've been gone, hybrids of wild boars and domestic pigs have been moving in. Former residents of Tomioka have been cleared to spend the daylight hours in their town, but they've got company. <laughs> Hybrid pigs roam freely throughout the area. Unlike wild boars, they are not wary of humans. They don't run away even if people approach them. That also means they're not shy about making themselves at home. This man has been returning to his home from time to time in hopes of eventually moving back permanently. One day, he found his house had turned into a pigsty. I close the doors, but they open them and walk around with muddy feet. The pigs ate all the sugar and salt he had stored on his porch. They didn't stop there. Anything else that was edible, they got to, including cooking oil. Wild boars do not enter homes. They hate the smell of humans. Hybrid pigs are different. Our smell makes them happy. 
In Japan, hybrid pigs are raised for meat. They are the offspring of male wild boars and female domestic pigs. Their meat is said to be less fatty than that of ordinary pigs and to smell less. Like wild boars, the hybrids have ravenous appetites. They eat all types of food, including plants and meat. On the other hand, they resemble domestic pigs in their lack of fear of humans. So they're not shy about breaking and entering a human abode. Even as humans are required to stay away for the most part, the hybrid animal population is multiplying. Each sow has about 10 piglets a year. That's twice the birth rate of wild boars. At the time of the nuclear disaster, only one farming household in the entire evacuation zone was raising such hybrid pigs, about 20 in all. It was in the town of Tomioka. These days, hybrids have been seen or caught in five communities, and their numbers are believed to have reached at least several hundred. Quite likely, domestic pigs and hybrid pigs left behind by their owners have been mating with wild boars. They're expanding their habitat since nobody lives there now. This is an unusual state of affairs. We need to reduce their numbers gradually and return to a normal environment. Cities, towns and villages in the evacuation zone have started culling the animals with the cooperation of hunting clubs. Many hunters, however, have gone elsewhere. Animals near the nuclear power plant are contaminated and unfit to eat. The more hybrid pigs there are in Tomioka, the less enthusiastic some people become about moving back. Katsutoshi Sakamoto is a livestock farmer. He cannot bring products to market under current conditions but he continues to take care of his cattle. He says hybrid pigs have been causing him trouble since last summer, breaking into the cattle barn and eating the feed. Those pigs, I've had enough. Every time I set out feed for my calves, they gobble it up. Sakamoto bought a large amount of rice as feed, but the pigs made short work of it. No matter what he does to drive them away, they eventually wander back. Sakamoto says if this goes on, he'll have to abandon the idea of coming back home. That would be a real blow, both psychologically and financially. They did it again today. And this time they broke down a door. What can I do? I can't take it anymore. Spring is prime time for breeding. So many piglets will be appearing in the coming months. The more they grow, the hungrier they'll get, making the plans of people to repopulate the area all the more difficult to achieve. Well, the Environment Ministry has been involved in trying to cull hybrid pigs since last November, but it's had only limited success. Even if hunters can be found to do the job, they're only allowed to stay in the area for a limited time because of radiation. The animals, however, unlike people, have no way of knowing they'd be better off foraging somewhere else.